Lecture five, everybody, week four. This is a particularly long chapter and it throws a lot of different uh, new vocabulary at you, including some general definitions. Uh, gachupines, the spur wearers, uh, criollos, uh, peninsulares, uh, also uh, the special focus on the mestizos. Uh, also the Republica de Indios and uh, this vocabulary helps us it's, it's important to kind of recognize uh, its origins and also how it, it kind of changed over time to help us understand this this uh, historical process that um, occurs from the author's perspective and uh, I think some of the things I want you to focus on in this chapter to, to get something from it is how the, the mestizo people, which at the beginning were the, the offspring of, you know, war in a worst like state, whole slaughter, whole slaughter, uh, rape of parts of the population how they were for a long time um, primarily used um, as uh, depending on on uh, on the circumstances and the context, but always with with the interest in mind of of supplying uh, Spain the empire with the goods uh, and needed to sustain it. Uh, it would play a, a more significant role later on, I, I believe, during the the. Um, the Republican period, which is after the colonial period. Now keep in mind that the colonial period is 300 years. That's, that's a long time. The United States as a nation uh, is officially over 200 years old. And we're, you know, obviously we've, uh, this nation has evolved accordingly. Um, but here we're talking about, you know, this region called, we call Mexico, which the author focuses on. We have 300 years and you know, many, many generations of people living uh, under this, this transformation. You have pre-Columbus hundreds of tribes, if not thousands. And then on top of that, you have more uh, sedentary groups, which eventually form uh, proto-like nations. Proto meaning before, right before it becomes a nation how we know it in the modern sense. We have, we have the, the Mexica, the Nochka, we have the Otomi, the Purepecha, the Tashkateca, uh, the Mixteco, Zapoteco, uh, Mayan, the Mayan people. So we have all these large uh, gr uh, groups of, uh, of, of, of native people, uh, all very sophisticated, uh, uh, and depending on wh which territory they're in. And now with the Spanish uh, consolidating uh, the conquest, they begin to, you know, use them, utilize and exploit them, but begins to, how do we control them? How do, you know, what are some of the things we can do to control them? Because it's, it's a lot of them. It's only a small group of us, but there's a lot of them. Well, of course, they would get help at the beginning from other native people who, who thought they might be able to get uh, some protection in the process. At the end of the day, according to the chapter, that wasn't so. I mean, they, they might have uh, enjoyed a, a, a degree of privileges for cooperating, but at the end, they would eventually lose that uh, two or three generations on the road. And uh, the, agree the, uh, the agreements uh, would never come to be fulfilled, which is, you know, similar to, to juxtapose it with U.S. history, where the United States, uh, once it becomes independent, you know, goes and signs these treaties with native nations and just consistently over time breaks them over and over and over again to take over more territory and exploit their resources in the land and all the things it needs uh, to enrich itself. So similar process we see here. So uh, let, uh, let's let's I want to kind of focus on right now the mestizo because there this is the the national narrative of several countries, particularly where there's large native populations. For example, in um, in Mexico and in Peru, those are nations with large numbers of native people. So from a genetic perspective, the, the majority of the population is primarily of native descent. 
But the national narrative, and I can only speak for Peru and Mexico because I'm, I'm borrowing from the author, the national narrative is that it's a mestizo nation. That means it's a nation that, um, if you say the word mestizo, it automatically it comes to mind. It's a mixed racial nation. It means a mix between European and native, and to a lesser extent, African, and to even a lesser extent, uh, Asian. And I want to bring the Asian there for a little because the Filipinos and the Chinese eventually would arrive and be absorbed by the by the population. But you know they have their own story to tell. But we're going to keep this uh, um, focused on, on the native transition between native nations and then eventually transition into a peasant peon debt pinnage good Christian Indians hispanicized Indians <clears throat> and so this is what the author is trying to do is can I help us little by little to explain how this process works because it's, it's kind of by understanding this process you can understand our how uh, our racial relationships in the United States also evolve in its own way <clears throat> which is similar now the mestizo. The mestizo, according to the author, doesn't become a substantial minority until the eighteen, uh, the early eighteen hundreds. So we're talking about the Spanish, the, the the majority native population, and in a growing African presence, uh, slave presence, enslaved presence, uh, interacting within this 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 uh, casta system that the Spanish are by force. Okay, not passive coercion. Coercion is the ability to um, to obligate another individual to do uh, what you want them to do, but overt coercion, overt violence, or the threat of it. Okay, and I, in my uh, in my summary, my lecture summary, uh, I, I use a contemporary example of what's going on today. You know, we are uh, passively being coerced to. Uh, uh, to obey uh, the uh, Oregon's governor's mandate uh, to stay home uh, and if we go out to public to stay six feet away from each other uh, and, and some of us even add to uh, to that um, other safety measures that we that we um, conclude um, by reading uh, and figuring out how safe we want to stay now that I read the example on my, on my summary so that you can understand how I'm, I'm making a connection here because back then it wasn't passive it was the threat, and the threat was always on the surface. Okay, so anybody who stepped out of line was going to get smacked down or killed. Okay, so it was really important for the Spanish to get rid of any intelligentsia, which basically means that intellectual part of the society, the leaders, uh, the commanders, uh, anybody who occupies the planning and executing of the, how the society is ran. Okay, important to get rid of them. Kidnap them, uh, persecute them, uh, accu accuse them, accuse them of uh, heresy, being heretics, burn them at the stake, etc. Okay, very important to do that. That way, you 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 put um, deep fear on the rest of the population to abide. All right. So and so now we're you know we're entering this phase for the next two hundred years of native people having to accommodate this situation. Of course, you have native co people cooperating in the process too, like actually willing cooperating. Which is it's kind of sad, you know, right? Because because we also see that in our modern society, how in the workplace sometimes even our own people will will uh, will compete with us and will align themselves with uh, with others to try to uh, uh, outcompete us uh, or advance. So may, maybe even uh, uh, achieve a supervisory uh, status. But let's go back to this because I'm going on 10 minutes here. Um, so we have the mestizo, and the mestizo would uh, play a, a really important part, even though they're a small minority in the context of genetics. Okay, genetics. We would acculturate native people. The native people to survive, they need to acculturate to Spanish habits. That would cause a fusion. And he describes it and gives you several examples on it. That would cause a fusion. Okay, so when, when Mexico would finally rebel, La Nueva España, finally rebel and rename itself, 
they had to construct a national narrative. The United States has a national narrative. Each nation creates a national narrative. Okay, and so Mexico's, including Peru's, it created an, a, 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 a narrative based on this mestizo. And now, not only genetically, but culturally, despite the fact that the nation is primarily of native descent and the environment they live in is of native creation, uh, uh, and everything that's been uh, uh, produced is of native, the people, no matter what the genetic background is, are eating native foods. Uh, the labor is native. Uh, the products in the world market are native, okay? So here you have it. So Mexico uh, needs to create a national identity, just like the United States, like Anglo, English, the English, um, the uh, Scottish, the Irish, all those people involved in the, in, in, the, in the American Revolution, once they threw the British out, they needed to construct an American identity. Okay? It's really important because by creating a story, you tell the kids that, and all of a sudden you... The kids, because they're emotionally involved, they begin to grab onto that story to begin to create a sense, of, a, a, a sense of pride, uh, which we call today patriotism or nationalism. Same thing happens here, okay? And so, and Mexico would eventually do that, which you'll probably read a little bit more uh, in, the, in the next couple of chapters. So I want to kind of leave it at that as you're paying attention to this part of the um, um, uh, in this chapter. And uh, so on Thursday, maybe you have some questions for me about this particular chapter, okay? Because it has a lot of stuff on it, and I think it'll be easy to come up with some questions to help clarify, okay? Because it's a lot to do with why your parents and why your grandparents and great-grandparents, you know, why they embraced, the, you know, that Mexican national. They don't know where it came from. All they know is that they're Mexican. Uh, when you ask them, are they Indian or are they... Uh, are they uh, mestizo? They, you know, they, they they go back and forth. Some of them will say like, you know, I, I do come from a rancho, and and people still speak their language, so you know, like, I think a native, right? And then there you have most of them who will say like, no, I think I'm Mexican, I'm mestizo, because Mexican is synonymous with mestizo, right? Because the word Mexican is co-opted from the Mexica Tenochtitlan people, and and to create a nation, you give this nation, a new, this new nation, a name, Mexico. Why? And why Mexico? Mexica out of the word Mexica, because they're the last group. Well, the last group before the, when the Spanish invaded to put a resistance. There's other groups who did it after the, the Spanish uh, set foot, permanent foot on uh, in Mexico, uh, but unfortunately they, they weren't successful enough to throw them out. Well, the Mayans did for about 76 years in the 1700s. Don't quote me on that. All right. Talk to you soon.